So now that we've found the confidence interval, we're going to answer a bunch of questions about it. The first one is, what is the point estimate for the interval? And I would just want to remind you all that the way confidence intervals work, it's always the lower comma the upper, and the point estimate is right in the middle of those two, at least for our purposes. Okay, so the point estimate was the thing that we added on to, right? It's the point 46 because that's the center of my interval. And then I just add on and subtract away the margin of error, which is my next question, right? So, so point 46, which is p hat. p hat is my center, and it was point 46. That was the center of the interval, right? That's what point estimate means. It's the center of the interval. All right, now what about the margin of error, right? Okay, so, and actually, it's just occurring to me, I think I'm going to draw this picture while I'm doing this, just so everybody can see. So the way this works is your point estimates in the middle, right? So your point estimates right here in the center, and then you add on and subtract away your margin of error. So your margin of error is this bit right here and this bit right here in order to get you your lower and upper, which I'll do in green. Your lower is over here, your upper is over here. Okay, that's the picture. So the error is this distance right here or this distance right here. Now, the formula for error, the margin of error, is given to us on the previous page. Right? So when we look, we can see it's it's the part that you add on subtract away after the plus or minus. Right? So right there, it's this bit. So the z times the standard error or the z times the square root of p hat q hat over n. Same difference. Right? So it's z alpha over 2 times big square root p hat q hat, there's a multiplication in there, divided by n. So that would be 1.6449. It's, it's this whole thing back here after the plus or minus, all of it. 1.6449 big square root 0 0.46 times 0 0.54 over 1293. Now, if you're paying attention, you might realize that this is actually given. This, this is the standard error of the p hat, which if you were being savvy, you might have realized was in the stack crunch output. It was sitting there. Let me go grab stack crunch. See this standard error right there? That's what that is, right? So that's that um, p hat q hat divided by the square root of n square root thing, right? So that's point zero point zero one three eight six. So it's right there. Um, you know, there's no reason you would have known it, but there you have it. So it's one point six four four nine times zero point. I'm gonna write that down. 0.01386, roughly. Okay, so let's find that. Well, Desmosis to my rescue. So, um, I, I actually, I think I can copy and paste this. Let me copy and paste this number. So copy, all right, let me go down here, 1.6449, because I still have to do the Z. There we go. Or 1.6449. Oh, I have it right here. Copy, paste. There it is. See? Now, there's a little bit of rounding, but it's not for a while, so I'm not worried about it. So it's they're the same up to a point. So 0 0.0228, 228. Perfect. So I'm going to put approximation signs here because we're rounding. There you have it. All right, so that leads me to a couple central ideas. And these are really important. We should highlight this box. So there are some cheating ways to do this. So you're thinking, oh man, do I have to do that every time to find the margin of error? And the answer is nope. Um, there's another way. If you have the interval, you can use this way. But you can only use these if you have the interval. So these are... Um, extra formulas that I'm going to give you, extra, I'm having issues with remembering my second letter, extra numbers, or, oh my goodness, extra formulas, sorry, <laughs> falling apart here, 
extra formulas only use if the interval, if confidence interval is known or given. So if you know your confidence interval, if you know your lower and upper, then you can use these. But otherwise, you can't. What are they? OK, well, the point estimate is the middle of the two, right? So if, you, if I just take my lower and add my upper, and I divide by 2, that would be the point estimate. That's one formula. Let me prove it to you. So if you think about this values right here, there's my lower, right? My lower is right here. My upper is right here. So I should be able to add those two up and divide by two and get 0.46. Let's see what happens. So let me go grab Desmos. OK, so I've got, I've got a lot going on here. OK, so parentheses. 0 0.43737 plus 0 0.48297, close parentheses, divided by 2. It works, right? 0.46. Now, it's got some rounding error, but that's all right, right? It works. So that's one formula, very critical. You really want to write these formulas on your formula sheet, right? You better, you better make notes and stars all over this. Right. Only use if the confidence interval is known. Right. That's the big deal. You can't use this unless you know the lower and the upper, right? because they rely on knowing the lower and the upper. All right, now the margin of error is basically the same thing. So two margins of error make this difference between the upper and the lower. So if I take this distance, which is upper minus lower, you have to take the higher one minus the lower one. The order there matters. And I divide it by 2, right? So I'm not taking the average. The point estimate is the average of the two. The margin of error is the distance between the two cut in half. Well, distance is subtraction. So if I take the upper minus the lower, I would put parentheses around them. Upper minus lower, divide by two, it'll work. So there's the second formula. They only work if you have the confidence interval known, though. Right, they're not going to work otherwise, so you can't use them all the time. It's it's kind of a trick. It's kind of a, hey, I know this is to be true about confidence intervals. All right, let me prove to you that this works. So let me go grab, okay, so parentheses, 0 0.48297, take away 0 0.43737, close parentheses, divide by 2, 0 0.0228 which is exactly what we said it was with the real formula. This is the real one, right? This is the cheating one. <laughs> it's it's the, the extra one. It's taking advantage of the, the structure um, of the confidence interval. That's how, that's how these work. So they're, ta they're using the fact that we know that the confidence interval has to have this shape in this picture. So because it has to have that shape in this picture, this will work, but only if I know the confidence interval, only if I know the lower and the upper. That's what I mean by the confidence interval. Right? I have to know the lower and the upper. They have to be given. Or I have to have already calculated them or something. There we go. I'll just say lower and upper given. All right, now just a couple more things and we're done. So um, first thing is to interpret the interval. Okay, so that follows a script-ish. I mean, the, a, remember, a script isn't hard and fast. It's more just kind of a, a way to nudge us in the right direction. So um, it gives us boundary lines. So we are 1 minus alpha percent confident, so our confidence level, um, that the true population parameter, which we have to put what that is in context, is between these values. Okay, so we are 90% confident because this was a 90% confidence interval, that. All right, now what was this about? This is talking about a proportion, right? The true proportion of all adult Americans that believe in ghosts, right? It's kind of right there, right? So that the true proportion of 
of all adult Americans. that believe in ghosts is between and I'm actually going to change these to percentages because I mean who writes decimals nobody so we would change it to 43.737 percent and 48.297 you can write the decimals if you want. It's just awkward. Generally, people don't, right? Now, keep in mind, it's a script. We are 90% confident. That's that's just the script. The true and then proportion of adult Americans, that's the parameter P in context. You're explaining what this was about, right? Oh, that believe in ghosts. All of that. And then is between this number and this number, and you're done. Right. The only hard part about it is putting what the value is in context, and everything else is pretty much what the script says. It's just with the numbers from your problem. All right, last but not least, a journalist claims that a minority, okay, well, a minority is less than 50%. So let me just write that. Less than 50%. That's what minority means. Right? If you're in the minority, you're less than 50%. So a minority of 50 um, me, of Americans believe in ghosts. Does your interval support or contradict that claim? Explain. Okay. Well, okay. So think about our interval for a second. Our interval goes from 43.737% up to 48.297%. So you have to ask yourself, is that lower than 50%? Is it less than? Well, sure. Yeah, it's less than, right? My point estimate's right here in the middle, 0.46, right? There's your point estimate, right? So you're asking yourself, hey, is this whole interval, my interval's from here to here, is that interval less than 50%? Sure, yes, supports. All right, so the interval supports the claim because the whole interval is below 50%. Which is what you wanted. You wanted less than, and you got it. You got less than. So since the whole interval is below 50%, you're supportive. I will say um, for these ones, to, I'll just make a note. To support the entire interval, that's the key with these ones, the entire interval has to be um, where the claim is. Oh, stating. I was trying to stating. Stating it is. In this case, because it said less than and we were below, we were good. The whole interval was below. If it had said less than, I don't know, less than 47, then that would have been a contradict because my whole interval is not below 47. If it had said 48, it would have been a contradict because my whole interval is not below 48. But if it says 49 or 50, then it's a support because my whole interval is below 49 or 50. See? So the entire interval has to be where they're stating in order for it to be a support.